Hey guys, Milos here and welcome to my YouTube channel. What if I told you that there is one nation in this world which has population of almost 50 million people but you probably never even heard of them? Be careful because this is about to change. In contexts of thousands of years of history including different conquerors, wars and religions, they were an amazing example of survival, adaptation and rebellion all at the same time. Sometimes they used to help their conquerors on their further quests, sometimes they participated and even assimilated into new societies, but also at some point they were taking leading positions in rebellion movements and fought for freedom. In this video join me on the journey across Northern Africa because you are about to meet the amazing story of Amazigh people. Who are the Amazigh? Amazigh people are descendants of pre-Arab inhabitants of the North Africa, but you might already know them by some other name. The Berbers. The reason why I'm using the term Amazigh instead of Berber is because they call themselves exactly like this. Also, there are some negative implications of the term Berber. It is in fact a variation of the Greek word barbaros, which is how ancient Greek called people whom they perceived to be either uncivilized or primitive, or people who simply does not belong to the Greek culture. This term was later adopted by Romans as the barbarian and used with a similar meaning. When speaking about the Amazigh, there are still some disputes in scientific circles regarding the origin of this name but it most likely originated from the old native word meaning the free or noble man. Imazirin, which is by the way a plural for Amazir, throughout history inhabited waste areas of Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Mali, Niger and Mauritania, which is with the exception of Mali and Niger also known as the Maghreb region of the northwest of Africa. Imazirin speak various Amazir languages mostly known as Tamazirt, Tamazight belongs to the Afro-Asiatic group of languages together with the Egyptian and Semitic languages. Today, Amazigh people are in political and cultural sense mostly integrated into the societies of the above-mentioned countries. But are they integrated? Let's have a look at some history. Maghreb region is believed to have been inhabited by the Amazigh people from at least 10,000 years ago. This theory is well supported by numerous archaeological sites, cave paintings, but also some Egyptian artifacts and nowadays with genetic examinations and DNA tests. When speaking of DNA tests, there is a bunch of YouTube videos of Moroccans, Algerians and Tunisians discovering their ancestors and origin not actually being Arab. It is considered there were three main tribal identities of Amazigh people, the Mori, the Numidians and the Getulians. The Mori inhabited the far west of the continent and founded the ancient state of Mauritania which is now Morocco and central Algeria. Numidians occupied the regions between the Mori and the city-state of Carthage. The Getulians were the only tribe living nomad way of life and they occupied the southern margins of the Sahara. It is considered in history that the first written record of Amazigh name is from 13th century BC from the ancient Egypt. Throughout the history, Amazigh people encountered many conquerors, Carthaginians, Romans, Vandals, Byzantines. Anyway, they had an interesting strategy for survival. They used to leave the, their coastal cities to the conquerors and then to retreat to the desert where they were out of reach. Then they took their time to reorganize and eventually to strike back. In case that was not working well, they simply waited for the empires to collapse. In between those invasions, Amazigh people even managed to run several independent states such as Mauritania and Numidia. Ruins of Mauritanian capital at Walili near modern Fez is still an amazing place to visit. Before Arab conquest to the North Africa, Tamazight was a language native to the region. Christian religion was widespread and deeply rooted even with famous saint and founder of Western philosophy, Saint Augustine, being an Amazigh man. Even though no previous conqueror tried to assimilate Amazigh people, Arabs quickly converted them and ensured their support for further quests. Without help of Amazigh people, for example, Andalusia could have probably never been conquered by the Arabs. An Amazigh warrior, Tariq ibn Ziyad and his 12,000 warriors gave crucial contribution to taking of Visigoth capital Toledo. At first, 
Only Amazigh people living near the coasts were involved in Arabization, but by the 11th century Islam began to spread far into Sahara despite rebellions of local people. One of those rebellions against the Arabs was led by famous Queen Kahina and it wiped out an invading Arab army and delayed the conquest. Kahina is also famous for burning Amazigh lands in order to starve the Arabs and slow down the invasion and then she fought to death becoming a symbol of rebellion to these days. Another interesting example of Amazigh rebellion might be a man known as Ibn Tarif who declared himself a prophet in 744 AD. He translated a Quran in Tamazigh language, which was by the way considered heresy back in that time, annihilated the Arab army and finally established his own kingdom of Bargawata in modern day Morocco. This Amazigh version of Islam was an extraordinary combination of Islam, Judaism and traditional Amazigh beliefs. After the initial rebellions and resistance, Amazigh people and Arabs found a common language, settling together in the cities and enjoying a common culture, literature and philosophy. This period in history is known as period of rule of Almoravids and Almohads dynasties, which happened from 11th to 13th century AD. After the final breakdown of the Amazigh Islamic empires in the 15th century, Achieved unification slowly faded away and some localized kingdoms replaced the empires. The 16th century introduced the Ottomans to the stage who have been ruling the region for about 400 years since capturing Cairo in 1514. In both the Ottoman Empire and still independent Moroccan Sultanate, the Amazigh people were slowly pushed to the margins of society. Process of Islamization and Arabization inevitably led to losing of identity for Amazigh people who are today mostly assimilated into societies of North African countries. But on the other hand, for example, in Morocco and Algeria, nearly one third of total population even today speaks some form of Tamazigh. But before jumping to the modern era, let's finish this history lesson with the French influence on the region. It all started on June 1830 with a French army landing on shores of the Ottoman Algeria. This marked the beginning of an end to a almost 1000 years long Islamic rule in the region. Most of Algeria fell to the French rule very quickly, in a matter of months, but there was one region which took French more than 30 years to conquer. This region was known as Kabylia. Kabylia was a mountainous homeland of the Kabyli Amazigh people and it is still a region in Algeria which is actually home for about 7.5 million people. When speaking about French policy in the region it can be described as divide and policy rule implemented on the local Arab and the Amazighan population with which French tried to make Amazigh people some sort of colonial partner, even claiming them to be more European than the Arabs. Kabylie, however, rejected the idea and even took significant role in the Algerian independence movement. Ironically, after the liberation from French, Algeria and Morocco established their countries based on the Arabic identity only and with the official language being only Arabic. Once again, Amazigh people had to learn Arabic language in their schools while pushing their own language and culture out from the public view. But what is the present situation with these people? As a sign of improvement of the position of Amazigh people, the World Amazigh Congress or WAC was founded in 1995. WAC is an umbrella organization that represents the Amazigh people and defend their rights in different countries. WAC also reviews the state and position of the Amazigh people by issuing regular reports from their meetings. One example of such report is the following conclusion regarding the position of the Amazigh minority in Libya. Quote, Gaddafi regime continues to follow its apartheid politics towards Amazighan, depriving them of their language and culture and threatening them with death when they claim their Amazigh identity. End quote. Concerning Amazigh rights in Morocco, WAC stated, quote, Members of WAC condemned the imprisonment of young members of the Amazigh cultural movement who were subjected to a highly unfair trial. It is time for Morocco to abandon its repressive measures of the black years and to free political prisoners. End quote. WAC also denounced the serious violations of fundamental liberties and the abrogations of rights in Algeria and politics of denial of Amazigh identity and forced assimilation in Tunisia. But, on the other hand, there are also some improvements in, uh, for example, in 1997 the flag of Amazigh people has been officially adopted by the WAC. The flag of Amazigh people consists of blue, green and yellow stripes and the red letter Yaz in the middle, meaning the free man, which is, if you remember, the name of the Amazigh. 
Blue color on the flag represents the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea, while the green represents mountains and the yellow represents the desert. Besides the flag, some other things also started to change in a positive way. In 2011, Morocco recognized Tamazight as an official language and Algeria did that too in 2016. Also, both countries started teaching Tamazight in public schools. One step forward was also the declaration of Tamazight New Year as national holiday in Algeria during 2018, as well as publication of the official government documents in both the Arabic and Tamazight language. In some other countries, such as Libya, Tunisia or Egypt, the Amazigh people are still struggling to defend their national and cultural rights. It is important to know that these developments in Morocco and Algeria did not came without price. Years of fighting for freedom start back with the colonization of North African countries during 60s and 70s. From the beginning, Amazigh people protested, claiming new governments are eradicating their cultural and linguistic traditions. In 1980, Algerian authorities prevented novelist Maloud Mameri from lecturing about Amazigh language and heritage at University of Tizi Ouzou in Kabli region. This event led to protests in which dozens were injured by security forces. Every year on April the 20th, Amazigh in Algeria take to the street to mark the Amazigh Spring and to demand self-determination for their community. This also repeated in 2001 when one student was killed in police custody. This resulted in huge riots that left more than 120 people dead. This event is known as Amazigh Black Spring. Morocco, for instance, prohibited parents from giving their children Amazigh names until 2014. In October 2016, protests in Morocco began when a fishmonger was crushed to death in the town of Al Hosseima by government workers. These protests developed into a movement calling for economic justice. Tamazight is today taught in some primary schools, although not in all schools, as it was promised. Let's say a few words about the demography and culture of the Amazigh people. Amazigh people today inhabit a waste territory of Maghreb, which stretches from the oasis of Siva in Egypt through Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, the Canary Islands and Sahara Desert to the north of Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso. Certain number of Amazigh people living in the North Africa is very hard to tell, but most estimations goes from 20 to 50 million people. Despite the Arab rule, Amazigh people kept their own identity and vibrant culture. Actually, there are different ethnic groups identifying themselves as Amazigh, such as Shila in Morocco, Shaoui, Kablis and Mozabites in Algeria, Djerba and Matmata in Tunisia, or Tuareg living in waste areas of Algeria, Libya, Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso. Tuareg is also known as the blue people for the color of their traditional clothes. When speaking about society, women in Amazigh society enjoys more freedom compared to Arab one. Women are allowed to own property, choose husband, divorce, don't have to wear the veil, and even can run the administration of the tribe. Also, they are well known for tattooing their hands and faces with unique traditional shapes. These shapes can also be found on Amazigh traditional carpets. Amazigh society is also quite democratic. All families and tribes enjoy equal rights and follow the codes of honor and the council of elders, which is in their language called Jama'a, which is in charge of politics, social problems, economy, as well as the crime and punishment. Amazigh use a nation script known as Tifana. As already mentioned, this writing system was suppressed by North African governments, but there are some improvements in recent years, such as books, official documents, and even traffic signs written with Tifana letters. Their language might be strange for Westerners, but there is something familiar to all of us. Arts and crafts that can be spotted in North African markets, along which may be the most notable being the Amazigh carpets. Amazigh people have their own calendar, which is based on the earliest mention of the Amazigh name in historical record. According to this calendar, today is year 2969. Amazigh cuisine is traditional for the region. It was influenced by years of dramatic history and different conquerors, with numerous flavors from distinct regions across North Africa. Amazigh cuisine differs from one area to another. For this reason, every dish has a distinct and unique identity according to the specific region it originates from. Popular authentic Amazigh preparations include tagine, couscous, shakshuka, pastilla, masmen, marquez, asida, lablabi, hari, sasa, makrud, harira, sfein and akhrish. What about some famous Amazigh people in world today? 
Well, beside already mentioned Saint Augustine and Tariq ibn Ziyad, did you know that at least two pharaohs of Egypt, five Roman emperors and even three popes were of Amazir origin? Also, there are a lot of Amazir artists, writers and singers from Morocco and Algeria, including Lorin, Hindi Zahra, Kateb Yassin, Mohamed Shafiq and many others. Also, famous football players Zinedine Zidane and Karim Benzema are both of Amazir descent. I would like to say at the end that the Arab-Amazir political relation is much more complicated than I explained and in order to explain it accurately it would take much more time. But if this video expanded your knowledge about Amazir people then I would consider it successful. Thank you and stay tuned.